Hi, my friends. Back to read another story to you. This is called Bread and Jam for Francis. It was one of my favorite stories when I was a little girl. The copyright tells us that it was written in 1964. I was born in 1963, so I was just one year old when it was written. But I didn't hear it, I think, until I got to school, probably in kindergarten or first grade. And I just really loved it, and I hope you'll love it too. It was breakfast time, and everyone was at the table. Father was eating his egg, mother was eating her egg, Gloria was sitting in a high chair and eating her egg, too. Francis was eating bread and jam. What a lovely egg, said Father. If there is one thing I am fond of for breakfast, it is a soft-boiled egg. Yes, said Mother, spooning up egg for the baby. It is just the thing to start the day off right. Ah, said Gloria, and ate up her egg. Francis did not eat her egg. She sang a little song to it. She sang the song very softly. I do not like the way you slide. I do not like your soft inside. I do not like you lots of ways. And I could do for many days without eggs. What did you say, Francis? Nothing, said Francis spreading jam on another slice of bread. Why do you keep eating bread and jam, asked Father, when you have a lovely soft-boiled egg? One of the reasons I like bread and jam, said Francis, is that it does not slide off your spoon in a funny way. Well, of course, said Father, not everyone is fond of soft-boiled eggs for breakfast. But there are other kinds of eggs. There are sunny-side-up and sunny-side-down eggs. Yes, said Francis, but sunny-side-up eggs lie on the plate and look up at you in a funny way. And sunny-side-down eggs just lie on their stomachs and wait. What about scrambled eggs, said Father? Scrambled eggs fall off the fork and roll under the table, said Francis. I think it is time for you to go to school now, said Mother. Frances picked up her books, her lunchbox, and her skipping rope. Then she kissed Mother and Father goodbye and went to the bus stop. While she waited for the bus, she skipped and sang, Jam on biscuits, jam on toast, jam is the thing I like most. Jam is sticky, jam is sweet, jam is tasty, jam's a treat. Raspberry, strawberry, gooseberry, I'm very Fond of jam. That evening for dinner, Mother cooked breaded veal cutlets with string beans and baked potatoes. Ah, said Father, what is more handsome on a plate and tastier to eat than breaded veal cutlets? It is a tasty dish, isn't it? said Mother. Oh, I messed up there. It said, it is a nice dish, isn't it? Said Mother. Eat up the string bean, Gloria. Oh, said Gloria and ate it up. She had already eaten her dinner of strained beef and sweet potatoes. But she liked to practice with the string bean when she could. Where do breaded veal cutlets come from? asked Francis. And why are French cut string beans called string beans? We can talk about that another time, said Father. Now it is time to eat our dinner. Francis looked at her plate and sang, What do cutlets wear before they're breaded? Flannel nightgowns, cowboy boots, furry jackets or sailor suits. Then she spread jam on a slice of bread and took a bite. She won't try anything new, said Mother to Father. She just eats bread and jam. How do you know what you'll like if you won't even try anything, asked Father. 
Well, said Francis, there are many different things to eat, and they taste many different ways. But when I have bread and jam, I always know what I am getting, and I am always pleased. You try new things in your school lunches, said Mother. Today I gave you a chicken salad sandwich. There now, said Father to Francis. Wasn't it good? Well, said Francis, I traded it to Albert. For what? said Father. Can you guess? Bread and jam, said Francis. The next morning at breakfast, Father sat down and said, Now I call that a pretty sight. A glass of orange juice, fresh orange juice, and poached eggs on toast. That's a pro proper breakfast for you. Thank you for saying so, said Mother. Poached eggs on toast do have a cheery look, I think. Show you the picture there. Francis began to sing a poached egg song. Poached eggs on toast, why do you shiver with such a funny little quiver? Then she looked down and saw that she did not have a poached egg. I have no poached egg, said Francis. I have nothing but orange juice. I know, said Mother. Why is that, said Francis. Everybody else has a poached egg. Even Gloria has a poached egg, and she is nothing but a baby. But you do not like eggs, said Mother, and that is why I did not poach one for you. Have some bread and jam if you are hungry. So Francis ate bread and jam and went to school. When the bell rang for lunch, Francis sat down next to her friend Albert. What do you have today, said Francis. I have a cream cheese, cucumber, and tomato sandwich on rye bread, said Albert, and a pickle to go with it, and a hard-boiled egg, and a little cardboard shaker of salt to go with that, and a thermos bottle of milk, and a bunch of grapes and a tangerine, and a cup custard and a spoon to eat it with. What do you have? Francis opened her lunch. Bread and jam, she said. And milk. You're lucky, said Albert. That's just what you like. You don't have to trade now. That's right, said Francis. And I had bread and jam for dinner last night and for breakfast this morning. You certainly are lucky, said Albert. Yes, said Francis. I am a very lucky girl, I guess. But I'll trade if you want to. That's all right, said Albert. I like cream cheese with cucumbers and tomatoes on rye. Now, I have to tell you, this is my favorite part. I just think it's so cute how he sets up his lunch. <laughs> Albert took two napkins from his lunchbox. He tucked one napkin under his chin. He spread the other one on his desk like a tablecloth. He arranged his lunch neatly on the napkin. With his spoon, he cracked the shell of the hard-boiled egg. He peeled away the shell and bit off the end of the egg. He sprinkled salt on the yolk and set the egg down again. He unscrewed his thermos bottle cap and filled it with milk. Then he was ready to eat his lunch. He took a bite of sandwich, a bite of pickle, a bite of hard-boiled egg, and a drink of milk. Then he sprinkled more salt on the egg and went around again. Albert made the sandwich the pickle, the egg, and the milk come out even. I, something about that I find highly satisfying. <laughs> he ate his bunch of grapes and his tangerine. Now this part shows Francis, but this part is talking still more about Albert, so I guess I don't need to show you Francis yet. Uh, let's see. Then he cleared away, oh, he ate his bunch of grapes and his tangerine. Then he cleared away the crumpled up wax paper, the eggshell, and the tangerine peel. He set the cup custard in the middle of the, of the napkin on his desk. He took up his spoon and ate all the custard. Then Albert folded up his napkins and put them away. He put away his cardboard salt shaker and his spoon. He screwed the cup on top of his thermos bottle. He shut his lunchbox, put it back inside his desk, inside. <sighs>
I like to have a good lunch, said Albert. Frances ate her bread and jam and drank her milk. Then she went out to the playground and skipped rope. She did not skip as fast as she had skipped in the morning, and she sang. Jam in the morning, jam at noon, bread and jam by the light of the moon. Jam is very nice. When Francis got home from school, Mother said, I know you like to have a little snack when you get home from school, and I have one all ready for you. I do like snacks, said Francis, running to the kitchen. Here it is, said Mother, a glass of milk and some nice bread and jam for you. Um, aren't you worried that maybe I will get sick and all my teeth will fall out from eating so much bread and jam? asked Francis. Oh, I don't think that will happen for quite a while, said Mother. So eat it all up and enjoy it. Francis ate up most of her bread and jam, but she did not eat all of it. After her snack, she went outside to skip rope. Frances skipped a little more slowly than she had skipped at noon, and she sang, Jam for snacks and jam for meals, I know how a jam jar feels, full of jam. That evening, for dinner, Mother cooked spaghetti and meatballs with tomato sauce. Oh, it's one of my favorites. Now I'm getting hungry. I am glad to see there will be enough enough for second helping, said Father, because spaghetti and meatballs are one of my favorite dishes. Spaghetti and meatballs is a favorite with everybody, said Mother. Try a little spaghetti, Gloria. Um, said Gloria and tried the spaghetti. Frances looked down at her plate and saw that there was no spaghetti and meatballs on it. There was a slice of bread and a jar of jam. Francis began to cry. Oh, oh my goodness, said Mother. Francis is crying. What is the matter? asked Father. Francis looked down at her plate and sang a sad little song. She sang so softly that mother and father could scarcely hear her. What I am is tired of jam. I want spaghetti and meatballs, said Francis. May I have some, please? I had no idea you liked spaghetti and meatballs, said mother. I almost read the other page. <laughs> How do you know what I'll like if you won't even try me? Asked Frances, wiping her eyes. So Mother gave Frances spaghetti and meatballs, and she ate it all up. The next day, when the bell rang for lunch, Albert said, What do you have today, Frances? Well, said Frances, laying a paper doily on her desk and setting a tiny vase of violets in the middle of it. Let me see. She arranged her lunch on the doily. I have a thermos bottle of cream of tomato soup, she said, and a lobster salad sandwich on thin slices of white bread. I have celery, carrot sticks, and black olives, and a little cardboard shaker of salt for the celery, and two plums, and a tiny basket of cherries, and vanilla pudding with chocolate sprinkles and a spoon to eat it with. Ooh, that's a good lunch, said Albert. You know, I think it's nice that there are all kinds of different kinds of lunches and breakfasts and dinners and snacks. I think eating is nice. So do I, said Francis. And she made the lobster salad sandwich, the celery, the carrot sticks, and the olives come out even. The end. Ah, oh, 
I just find that story very satisfying. And that's what a good book should do. It should make you feel satisfied or, or really that you can relate to the story. I think maybe it's because I really like food too and I like a good lunch <laughs> and having lots of little different things in the lunch to make it more interesting. Well, that book was a little longer than the ones I've read in the past, you boys and girls, but I hope that it engaged you and made you think about how maybe the next time your parents might want you to try something you've never had or aren't sure you're going to like. You never know. You might just want to try it. Well, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.